All right, back at it again. So now we're gonna do the run to the water heater. Uh, this is just gonna be a single bit of uh, um, Romex in uh, half inch conduit. And we're just gonna go from the box over to here. There, this box doesn't have the, I was hoping it had holes across the back, but it doesn't, it's got two on one side and then a service hole on the top and then two on the other. And so we're gonna have to, um, once I get up to the ceiling, we'll have to bend the conduit slightly to get it up against the wall where I want it. So I don't have a conduit bender. It's not a huge deal. You can take a long piece and kind of put a kink in it and just sneak up on it. All right, so, um, the way I'm going to tell where I need to mark this is just hold it up underneath this other piece here and uh, grab the permanent marker and and mark it. So I just want to make sure that it's uh, more or less vertical with the other piece. And how far down does that go? It goes like all the way to there. So, so we're going to cut it right here and see if that fits. Okay. Perfecto. Now I don't know, uh, can you guys see that? Let's get you up there where you can see it. I don't know where this is gonna go. This is probably gonna go something like that and then it's gonna be bent somewhere over and, oh, I'm off camera, off screen. Try that again. So it's going to be bent somewhere in, somewhere in here. And so I don't know where this is going to go yet. So there's no reason to tighten this up because I don't quite know where that's going to go. So we'll do that next. All right, guys. I'm going to try to stay out of your road here and uh, get this in where it needs to be. No idea if you guys can see or not. This may be a total waste of time. Hey, look at that beautiful thing. All right, that worked great. Uh, so just put a uh, uh, lead shield in there get this thing up and then I gotta go over there and do the same thing and I'm not gonna film it so alright guys um, I'm not sure where we left off on the last video we're doing the run for the water heater it's the one in front there up here it didn't go as well as I wanted it just doesn't route quite like I wanted but it is fastened right there and it does run all the way down and go around and so what we're in the process of doing is we are going to get this secured into place and you know right now it's not held up so as soon as I secure the handy box it's going to be all secured in place um, one of the things one of the things I realized in the last video I forgot to ground that handy box so I'll be doing that I'll also be grounding this box so I just forgot, I've got a little piece, a little whip of um, ground that I can use. So I will be grounding that one and of course grounding this one. So, Part of what's going on here is I don't think I can reach I don't think I can reach the water heater with what's left and so I think I'm gonna have to make up a connection in the box um, uh, I don't know if that's legal or not um, 
I would have liked to have had enough material to go all the way to the hot water heater, but I'm not going to cut off at, I forget how much this roll of I forget how much this roll of uh, Romex was, 250 feet was just right now with, with uh, world supply, it's just off the chain. So uh, I'm going to make do with what I got. Uh, I'll say it again in this video, this is not a code installation. I'm going to put wire nuts in there and then whip out to the hot water heater and uh, it's going to work fine. Um, if you're doing a code installation, uh, that's not what this is. This is a far farm installation for myself. You do what you do. So uh, back to what we're doing. I don't think I got enough material to go from the box to the hot water heater in one shot. So I'm going to do uh, makeup in the box there and then uh, um, come out to the hot water heater with, with, I guess you'd call them pigtails or whatever. All right, guys, I thought you might be interested in seeing the toolbox. I got all my tape in the top. This is my wire nut box. So I got all my wire nuts down here in this section. And uh, I th is that all I got? Yeah, my staples are not in here. So my staples and lugs and all that stuff are there. You can see the different boxes I've got. There's my Wurzbo. So anyways, that's that. All right, so I'm just making up my uh, connection now. And then I can always route this through the uh, uh, liquid tight, water tight, whatever the hell it's called. I'm not a electrician, so couldn't tell you what the trade names are. But um, something, some kind of liquid, liquid tight crap. Uh... Yeah, actually, I don't even need to put this on here. I can do it from the other end. So I just need to see how much of this I want in the box. I want it like this. Just want to make sure that these uh, go on the same. Get those started. Get this one started. That one's already been used. Just want to pull on them, make sure that they don't come off. Get those grounds out of the way. All right, now I gotta find. Now I gotta find a ground whip here, a ground, and I gotta get. Hang on, come on, go through there. Get on this side. There we go. Get those out of the road. Get these pushed in. I've got to get a ground lug in here. All right, guys, so the water heater is four feet tall right here. And this is where my whip's coming out. And I'm assuming my whip's going to go about like this. I'm not going to trim off this uh, watertight stuff until I actually get the hot water heater in location. I don't know how much of this I'm going to have to cut off. All my connections are made in here. My... Uh, watertight fitting is on and so I just need to cut this to size and then cut this to size and this is when my hot water heater is going at four at four feet man I thought it was five feet I think it's four feet so anyways that's where that's going um, we're gonna go ahead and move on I want to get all the wiring done so we're gonna move to the lights next uh, we're going to get rid of all these plastic boxes and all this crap, and we're going to get rid of this 8-foot neon and get everything off the wall and uh, go ahead and get uh, the, the um, conduit installed for the lights and then get the lights up. So that's next. 
Alright guys, so what I thought I would do is show the lighting circuit. Um, we'll start at the box over here. So the lighting circuit comes off of... Um, the lighting circuit comes off of this circuit here. And it goes up to that circuit there and into this into this uh, conduit and then it goes up and across and the power comes down into this box and what we've got here so I made the mistake of switching the neutral and you don't want to do that so power comes into the outlet on this side and goes back out sorry guys goes back out on this side. So we've got a hot black wire and a neutral white wire hooked up to this outlet. And then what I did was called switching the neutral and then promptly got shocked. <clears throat> and you don't want to do that. So what you want to do is bring the black wire out of the top here, or in this case, I think it's the top on mine. And you're going to switch the power side, the, out, the hot side, not the neutral. So your black wire is going to come from your outlet and go to your switch. And then your black wire is going to come out of your switch and go into this one. And this is the lighting circuit. If you switch the neutral and you carry the black one through, you're bringing your power straight through here and up to your lights. And what will happen is the power will come into the switch and you're going out to both outlets up here in the ceiling. I don't know if you can see them or not. And if you ground yourself to the black side, you complete the circuit and get shocked. If you switch the black instead of the neutral like I had originally done, then you're killing the power at the switch itself. Now, um, so back to this outlet, what, um, what's going on here is um, let me see if I can find it for you. Uh, where's the... Oh. So, the, um, white side, the white wire that goes up into this side here carries through. And what I mean by that is the white wire is hooked up to the outlet and, and goes from the outlet. The white wire for the lights goes from the outlet up into this tube. The black wire has to go through the switch before it goes into the tube. So the two wires that come down, the white one goes here and the black one goes here. And that's switched black. So then we come up here. Um, I already finished that outlet up and didn't worry about showing you guys because... Um, because it's already all done up and it was a pain in the ass to get all the grounds connected. So, um, what I did do down here is I actually am going to show you. So the grounds, I cheated and tied one of the grounds to the box fastener. It's good enough for me. All the grounds are tied together from the outlets. Um, white wire comes in here and then white wire jumpers across from one outlet to the other. Same with the black wire. And so the black wire from here, from, sorry, from here also comes into this side right here and then jumpers over. And that's how I'm powering these two outlets. They're grounded. I'll go ahead and get the uh, everything pushed up in there. Make sure the grounds don't touch any of those little studs sticking up. I accidentally cut them a little long. Um, so you can see how that's wired there. That's basically... <coughs> it's very... Uh, it's very similar to how I wired the closed box. Um... So power comes out of the distribution panel into the plug in the first outlet there. 
that outlet's hot all the time. So the power from the breaker to that outlet is always on. Then I'm bringing the hot across to the switch and I'm switching the hot. I'm taking the neutral from the outlet and going straight into the conduit up here for these plugs. And so I'm switching the hot, which means I'm switching these outlets and that's how I'm gonna control my lights. So that's the circuit for the lights. Um, I'll do a final on that power there that goes to the hot water heater when I get to it. Okay, so then this is the hot water heater portion. Hopefully the wide angle camera shows you the hot water heater that I got for 75 bucks on eBay Marketplace. Uh, it's an older hot water heater. It doesn't have a digital control, which is fantastic because that's exactly what burned out on my last one was the circuit board. So hopefully this bad boy works. Uh, I can't imagine there's... There's like four electrical components to it, five, including the uh, high tempo uh, switch. But yeah, so really simple. We're gonna connect this over here. And so we gotta get, we gotta tee up for cold water and then we gotta tee up for hot water. And I haven't quite figured the hot water thing out yet. And eventually there's gonna be um, angle stops, which I just don't have right now. And I'm gonna hook it up without them, but when I bring the water, you know, power, or, uh, um, depressurize the water, I'll get some angle stops in or some ball valves or whatever. So in, in the meantime, we're gonna, I'm gonna glue up and get stubbed up. And then the electrical portion is really easy. It's just um, uh, 220 connection with the ground, which is this thing here. And so uh, we'll get started here. All right, guys, so what you can see is I'm just trying to get my height. Just trying to see how this is going to shape and about where it's going to land on the wall. It's cut a little long. And then this one here, I think is just going to come, this is the hot water side. I think this is just going to come straight over like this. And then um, I think it's going to come down. I think it's gonna come down like this. So I'm trying to this old copper pipe. Whoa, 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 don't kink. Did I just break that? No. So don't want to kink it. So we're gonna make sure and make each section articulate. And I have, I have these in case I do something bad. I've got flexible stainless, but for now, if I can reuse these, I may be able to return. I may be able to return those. I don't know. I don't know. It may be worth having them on hand just in case. So looks like it's going to go something like that. So this was an eight inch spacing, but I think I'm gonna go four inches, something something close to four inches. Yeah, we'll see if that reaches. So I'm gonna pull this back to get this bent. You'll see, you'll see. So we're gonna do my famous tube bending here. I'll put that over there. Ow, right in my eyeball. Okay, so we're going to heat this right in here.
Alright guys, at this point I just need to get this positioned. This obviously is not on center line, so if I wanted to get it a little closer, I'd probably do something like that. And I just need to see where to cut it. So I want it to be here. So I'm going to cut it like right there. So I've got a chop saw in the shop and I'm going to go cut it in there because I hate using regular saws. So I'll be back. So here's my setup. These sockets right here are an inch and an eighth deep. It's two and a quarter across, inch and an eighth deep. So I'm going to cut that section out and then get ready to glue up. Uh, hopefully this doesn't uh, jam up on me. fitting in and we'll turn that so that it's flush with the wall can't see it's just dark oh yeah I can't help it all right now we're going to go ahead and get our second fitting in. And unfortunately we can't twist this one, so we're going to get lots of primer on there. Make sure we're... we've got plenty of material to break the PVC down. Last but not least, we're gonna get some glue, some chunky, chunky glue. Oh, that is some chunkified glue. Oh man, that, oh, don't let that drip down inside. You know how that could end. And we're gonna slide it on and hold it. Move your arm down, or you don't care anymore. There we go. All right, and I probably should have done the uh, CPVC first, but that's just the way the ball bounces. Where is what do you mean? my green route oh, right here? Did you show any of this other stuff that we already did? No, I don't even remember if this is in another video. What are you talking about? I don't remember if any of that's in another video. I meant all this. You should like... I don't know. Never mind. Okay, so that one's in. And we'll go ahead and work on the CPVC here in a minute. Alright, so now we're going to do the other one. So, this fitting here is one to one to three quarter and I had to do that because in CPVC, they don't make reducing fittings. It's ridiculous, or at least I couldn't find any. So it goes from one inch to three quarter, um, and it's gonna, these sockets are one inch both, and then there's seven eighths in the middle, so this is two and seven eighths total. I'm cutting seven eighths out and gluing up. So first we're gonna cut the seven eighths out, and then we'll do some gluing. See you.
weird stuff. And when it glues up, you got to be Johnny on the spot. It's, uh, it seizes really quick. There's not much working time. So... We will uh, get this on there. And you got to be done, like, right away. those set up so uh, that's gonna be the tap for the hot water heater let's see all right guys so um, there's gonna eventually be shutoffs on here but I want this in tonight so I'm gonna let this set up for about a half hour and then we'll go ahead and get the water heater over here and get it wired up um, like I said, there eventually will be shut off valves here, not tonight, so. Um, so the pipe runs, this pipe here runs downhill, which is why this is tipped over. Um, at this point, I'm just insulating pipe. Like I said, insulating so I lose as little hot water as possible. So I'm not going to show you guys that because it's real simple. You insulate the pipe. Alright, so I'm not super happy about this connection, but it is what it is for now. Um, I think... Uh, I think it would have been better if these were shorter. And these are also sort of, they were clogged, I had to clean them, They're, they need to be replaced. So that's going to happen. Um, we're going to get on to this watertight connector, but... I also don't like how flop that one's not bad this one's pretty floppy I want to fix that so for right now um, we're gonna go ahead and get this electricals connected and we'll deal with that later all right I don't know if this is a good use case or not this is a watertight connector there's an o-ring right here that seals this to this plate obviously this isn't watertight down here um, but I'm going to use it for this whip and to use this up and we'll go ahead and make up the connection inside here so I can go ahead and cut this to size so it's going to look something like um, something like sorry guys uh, I'm going to make it a little long and then I can cut it down so you can just use a regular PVC cutter and we'll go maybe here and we're going to check our length get this inside of here And we're going to flip that over. You got to make sure and not smash these fingers. <coughs> and I like that. So we'll go ahead and tighten that one down. I got to get in your guys' way. All right, can you see that? Yeah, just barely. Uh, that's better. So, and then we're going to come through this plate and we'll trim up here in a minute. Oh, can't forget my ferrule or my nut. And we'll get this end on. And I like it. It fits nice. Uh, we'll get this spun down. Get you guys back where you can see the whole thing. Get this light a little closer. Come on. So 
Sorry guys, trying to get the lighting. Yeah, there we go. So, get this spun down. And that's our watertight connector. Like I said, this may not be the a good use case. I don't know. I don't know if water heaters are considered a wet area. They may be. I just don't know. I'm not an electrician. But I had this left over, so it was time to use it. So now I'm going to cut my connector here. Get um, my grounds put in, which wherever that went. All right. So there's the ground connector. There's the screws for the covers. Uh, I broke my blades, so I'm borrowing my son's. So we'll leave a little bit of Romex on there. Come on. And His blade's dull. Come off of there. All right. Now I'm going to actually trim this up. All right. We'll, uh, black to black and we'll go red to white. I'm guessing you need 10 gauge. I don't know what this is. Don't quote me on it. I'm not an electrician. Uh, let's see here. I think this looks like, I don't know, it might even look like 14, which is way too small, but hoping it's 12. Which even that, I think this thing uses, it's 4,500 watts, so um, let's see, I want to trim this off here. This is a lot. Um, 4,500 watts, I think is like, I think it's 20, I don't have my cal a calculator on me. It'd be like 21, 20 something. But you got to go 125% on your breaker for a load like a hot water heater. That's how you size your breaker and all that good junk. Yeah, I want to say this is like, shit, this might even be 14. I'll have to check and see if it heats up. Uh-oh, what happened here? Something, something feels like it twisted off. Let's try that again. Probably got fatigued or cut or something. So those are in, and get them turned and get them tucked in here all pretty like, and then we'll run our ground.
We'll get that ready to go. How goes it? Oh, close. Where's the controller? There ain't no controller on this one. How does it know to be on and off? It's just got, um, it's just got, uh, um, Temperature controlled relays, I believe. Where are they at? They're down there somewhere. In there, oh. probably. Have you pulled those and tested to see if they're good or not? Nope. Resistance? Neep. Nope. Are you going to? Neep. Nope. I'm going to fire this bad boy up. We'll shoot. Bobby. Where is my flathead? Well, that's nice that it doesn't have, I'm assuming it's probably more reliable than uh, oh, I mean, it just doesn't have a circuit board. Did you board. take this? This mine? Is it what? This. This mine? This uh, crescent ring? Ah. What happened? I hooked it the wrong way so it fed it out, fed it out from under it. Oh. This has been, doesn't seem like it's been too bad of an install so far. We've definitely encountered worse. this is this mine yeah did you take it from the thing you, uh, you want to make sure you put that back i don't want water getting on a crank oh i like that that's nice and simple sorry sorry youtube no, no, i'm sorry for don't strip it out no that's why i got it on one now all right so that's all buttoned up two hots in the ground Shouldn't you turn it on first? Oh, Shiza! Look at that. What? Oh. oh, beat up. Beat up Betsy here. Ooh, 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 ooh. What kind of whack? What? It barely fits on there. That's crazy. They didn't make it a little wider. Yeah. Got our 70s technology. Alrighty, get this cover on, or if you'd like, you can remove it for inspection. Are you going to purge this? Thing? Okay, what the? Are you going to purge it first? Yes. Okay, I'll go grab the hose. Are you ready to do that? Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, this is all done. Let me get you guys all over here and. Yes. Yeah, you can close those. So I'm all done. Uh, we're gonna purge the hot water heater or the water heater, and then once we're done purging it, uh, I'm gonna fill it up with water. Once that's done, I'm going to once it's filled up with water and checked for leaks, then I'll turn it on electronically and make sure that it, I can hear it sizzling and doing all the good stuff it's supposed to do. So. Uh, if you learn anything from this video, I'm stoked. It was kind of a mess, but as always, I hope this helps somebody. Talk to you guys later.